And we have four bills this morning, members, member, <laughs> one on consent. And uh, Mr. Bell, please join us. You have SB 906, item number two in your agenda. Uh, Madam Chair, Senator Bidek, uh, <laughs> Good morning. Uh, I'm pleased to present SB uh, 906. Uh, this is um, um, a bill that was um, um, responding to um, the issue of foster youth, and we originally passed a law that um, allowed priority registration in our colleges for foster youth. The bill, um, at the time it was passed, uh, had a time limit of January 2017. There's also a time limit for the extended opportunity programs and disabled student programs in California for priority registration for classes. And um, what this bill does simply is eliminate the time limit and says that uh, the time limit will, will, the time limit right now is uh, January of next year. So we have to do something on this this year. I have witnesses. I'm not going to, I'm going to abbreviate my comments, Madam Chair, so the witnesses can, can discuss uh, their, their feelings. Thank you. Thank you. In support of the bill, please. Who'd like to begin? Oh. I'll just. Lemley with the John Burton Foundation, and we have here to speak to the uh, efficacy of priority registration. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> My name is Dion Barron. I am uh, 21 years old. I am a student at Sierra College. My study is psychology. Uh, I entered the, uh, the foster care system when I was five years old. Um, I've been there until I emancipated. Uh, while my stay in the foster care system, my parents had lost their parents and rights due to the fact that they were uh, drug addicts. Um, during my time in the foster care system, I was required to change uh, many different schools. So um, I developed a learning disability, or well, not disability, but learning de de delay. And um, I also got held back in the second grade. Uh, when I initially, when I initially, I initially entered Sierra Chabot College when I first graduated in 2013, and I had to, you know, put myself into college. I didn't have any support from my guardians or anyone around me, so I had to, you know, go ahead and push myself that way. And um, my first year in, at Chabot College, uh, life was put on me real quick. At the age of 18, I had got uh, kicked out of my, not really kicked out, but I was always told as soon as I turn 18, you have to move out, and that's what happened. So I ended up going homeless for a while, for a whole year. So I stayed on my friend's couch and while I went to school, and I dropped out of uh, Chabot College. Um, I decided that I wanted to go back to school and because I knew that my way out of the struggle was through education. Uh, when I got to Sierra College, one of the uh, support support things, one of the supports that I was able to use was priority registration. With priority registration, I was able to um, go on to rate my professor and look at all the different teachers that will fit my learning style because um, w without that, I will be put into just any any teacher's classroom. And I was, when I first got to Sierra College, was put in just random classrooms at first. And the teachers didn't fit my learning style. I didn't have the opportunity to uh, look them up and search and what kind of teacher they are, what kind of, te what kind of teaching style they have. Sorry, I gotta slow down. Um, so, uh, like I said, um, so the second semester, I was able to use the priority registration. Um, that semester, I was able to find uh, psychology teachers who I was, who I felt fit my learning style, and math teachers who I felt fit my learning style. And at the result of that, I ended up getting a, a 3.2, and I made the dean's list after that. So, I definitely feel like the priority registration has benefited me a lot. Without that, I wouldn't be able to find these teachers to fit my pro, uh, my my learning style. Um, um, finally, um, so like I said, the support is, is a benefit uh, that I am definitely, definitely taking a part of. Um, the party registration with many other things is the reason why I'm able to excel inside my classes because again, I know I keep saying this, but I am able to find teachers that fit my learning style, which is very important for foster youth because you know, going through the educational system, we don't have a lot of teachers in elementary school or middle school and, and high school that's, that's, um, that's, you know, I can be able to say, well, that teacher's not, 
the way I want to learn, you know, and then having this opportunity in college and knowing that I have this support group is the reason why I continue to go to college. Um, just to throw a little statistic out there, I learned that only 3% of foster youths even um, obtain a BA degree, and those 3% of foster youths do it with the support of the school. So, you know, this, this is why I feel that the priority registration is very beneficial, and this is why we need it and continue to have it. Um, thank you for taking the time to hear my testimony. Thank you very much. In support of the bill? My name is William King. Uh, I'm another former foster youth who currently attends Sierra College and have for the past three years. Um, and this is a very great friend of mine that I've able to have the privilege to meet while um, working and attending Sierra College. Um, growing up for me, I know for, example, for sure that it's been different than Dion um, just because of my location. Um, but bouncing around, you know, difficult and made it difficult for me to, you know, get through high school. Now I'm in college. This is my higher education. A lot of former foster youth don't have this opportunity. Uh, and with priority registration, it has gotten me to the point where I am able to receive my first degree before I am 21 as a former foster youth. So I feel that this priority registration is a big, is a big deal and plays an important part in our life as a former foster youth. And I feel that being able to have this privilege, I see it as a privilege, has allowed me to become a leader and educate the public upon former foster youth and the system. So therefore, I feel that we do need to continue with Thank priority you. registration. Thank you very much. Yes. <clears throat> Hello, my name is Janet Kaysen. Um, I go to Solana Community College. I'm actually part of EOPS, FYSI, CalWORKS, and um, DSP. Um, EOPS, uh, credit registration, has allowed me to pick my classes early. And also, if I mess up, I can get in contact with the counselor and, re and get a different class. Um, um, we also provide uh, you know, grants for extra things, like me being a former foster youth, not having someone, a parent to lean on, I can um, have those, those funds to pay my bills and get extra things I need from my class. And, um, yeah. <laughs> okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Any others in support of the bill? Thank you. Uh, good morning. Uh, Matthew Canty on behalf of the Faculty, so Faculty Association of California Community Colleges. We strongly support this bill. Thank you. Uh, Justin Selnick on behalf of the Board of Governors of the California Community Colleges, co-sponsor of the bill in support. Thank you. Thank you, Mark McDonald, on behalf of the San Diego Community College District in support. Thank you. Uh, Keith Ellis, representing the California Association for Post-Secondary Education and Disability in support and uh, student personnel assistant at Casunas River College. Thank you. Hi, my name is Kalei Chitati. I was not aware that I was supposed to take a chair in order to really give an extended uh, testimony. Would I be able to do that for just a few sentences? Uh, sure, if you may be brief, please. Okay, so I am an EAPS student. This is my second uh, year at Sacramento City College. And being a part of EOPS has given me extended opportunities. I have to commute at least an hour from public transit to order to get to school. And I'm also a part of my uh, school student senate. And a part of being a student senate, you have to attend board meetings every Wednesdays from 12 to 12 to 1. And without priority registration, I wouldn't be able to be eligible to serve on the board because I wouldn't have a flexible schedule. So I am in support of this bill. Thank you very much. <clears throat> How you doing? Uh, my name is Foy Reynolds, and I am a part of EOPS, and I'm here to support this bill because not only am I a part of EOPS, uh, I'm a single parent, a mentor to YMCA and sports coordinator there, uh, and it's hard for me to do the things that I do for my children and in the community if I can't have a set schedule. And there's only one way I'll be able to have a schedule at the college that I attend, Sacramento City College, and that's if I have priority registration. So I support this bill strongly because not only for me, but for all the people like me in the position that I'm in. Thank you very much. 
Good morning, my name is Irma Rodriguez and I'm from Sacramento City College EOPS. I strongly support the bill. I was a past EOPS alum and I'm now a counselor for our EOPS students and having registration support is essential for our students to be able to follow their educational plan, which is really clearly regimented for them and, and they have to be enrolled in 12 units. So taking away this privilege would be detrimental to our students and also may decrease our enrollment in EOPS. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Fabio Gonzalez. I'm the president of the California Community College EOPS Association, co-sponsor of the bill. We're in full support of this bill. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Hello, I'm Yolanda Pineda. I'm with the Children's Law Center of California, and we support this bill because it allows foster youth to enroll in the courses they need to graduate from college. Thank you. Thank you. Senator Bell, would you like to, um, any, oh, anyone in opposition to the bill? We didn't, the committee didn't receive any opposition. Any questions from members? The bill has been moved, but you, let's uh, let's call the roll first. Establish a quorum. Lou here. Lou here. Runner. Block. Here. Block here. Hancock. Leva. Leva here. Mendoza. Mendoza here. Monning. Here. Monning here. Pan. Vidak. Vidak here. At six. Six, we have a quorum. Um, any closing remarks, uh, Senator Bell? No, just to cite the statistic that was cited earlier that uh, foster youth, uh, I think it's like 6% six percent of foster youth have a college degree, either an AA or a BA. 10% um, of low income students and 29% of students with a, dis a disability as opposed to half the population is not low income disabled or in foster care. So there's a wide disparity on uh, the higher education um, levels. Uh, this evens the playing fields. It creates um, a way to um, correct the disparity. And I urge and I vote. Thank you. Thank you. There aren't, are there any questions from members? There's no questions. The bill has been moved. Uh, let's call, and, and um, Chair is recommending do pass. Do pass to appropriations, Lou. Aye. Lou, aye. Runner, Block. Aye. Block, aye. Hancock, Leva. Aye. Leva, aye. Mendoza. Aye. Mendoza, aye. Monning. Aye. Monning, aye. Pan. Aye. Pan, aye. Vidak. Aye. Vidak, aye. That's seven. Seven, uh, seven, zero. The bill is out. We'll keep the roll open for an absent member. Okay, let's take up the consent item. Um, item three, SB 911, Hertzberg. Oh, move, bill has been moved. Consent is amended. Consent as, a, is consent as amended. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Motion is consent as amended. Lou? Aye. Lou, aye. Runner? Block? Aye. Block, aye. Hancock? Leva? Leva I Mendoza, Mendoza I Monning, Monning I Pan, I Pan I Vidak, Vidak I. That's seven. Seven zero. The bill is sufficient, but we'll keep the roll open for our absent member. Okay, members, this is item one. Um, a couple of weeks ago, we had a, a hearing on the uptake of the uh, LCFF, and this is part of that uh, discussion, the California Collaborative for Educational Excellence. This SB 871 does two things. It establishes a pri pilot program administered by the collaborative that will provide uh, volunteering educational agencies of technical assistance and support to improve instructional practices and produce better outcomes for students. And the second thing it does is also establishes a statewide uh, system of professional development on the LCAP evaluation rubrics for local education agencies. And specifically, it will, um, it, the training will focus on how the evaluation rubrics can inform the LCAP de development and improve student achievement to close the achievement gaps. So, as I said earlier, the, um, we know that some districts and county offices of education face challenges developing their LCAPs. And going forward, the evaluation rubrics now being developed by the state board 
should be used to drive the updates and to the plans and um, as a basis for establishing a program for continuous improvement. So we are in the initial stages of organization. The collaborative was established to advise and assist schools in certain situations, uh, including upon the request of the governing board of school boards, um, county offices, or charter schools. The state board will ev eventually, well, they will adopt their evaluation rubrics in September. However, some schools are in need of assistance right now. So this is a perfect opportunity for the collaborative to test pilot technical assistance delivery, uh, which in turn hopefully will better inform development of a statewide system of technical assistance. So the state needs to provide a system of professional development for both county and school personnel to ensure that they have the tools necessary to use data, the evaluation rubrics, and their LCAPs to implement a system of continuous improvement. So um, SB 871 was designed to meet those needs and I have amendments suggested, I will adopt the amendments suggested in the analysis and uh, I'm happy to answer questions um, you may have. Yes, good morning. I'm Liz Guillen with Public Advocates. Um, we support the um, the uh, proposal in the bill. Um, we think it would be very helpful to know in advance uh, what the collaborative uh, um, aims to do and how it aims to do it. So we welcome the conversation and we look forward to working more with the author and other stakeholders. As I testified uh, at the informational hearing two weeks ago, um, we are a little concerned that community stakeholders are not uh, given their role in statute uh, about um, the evaluation rubrics uh, and the CCEE process. So we hope to uh, interject that uh, point uh, and hopefully hopefully make it uh, more visible in the bill going forward. Thank you. Good morning, Martha Alvarez on behalf of the Association of California School Administrators. AXA does not have a position on the bill yet, but we will be taking the bill to the staff on the policy committee next week. Staff will be recommending a support position on the bill. Uh, we think it's a great um, opportunity to build capacity at the local level in, in being able to implement and use the evaluation rubrics. Um, we also think that there's, uh, we like the two-prong approach of having the pilot program to determine what kind of uh, technical assistance school districts we need. And we also like the, the uh, professional development opportunity for um, local administrators, teachers, and other stakeholders uh, to better use the evaluation rubrics. Uh, we look forward to working with Senator Lou and the staff in making sure that this bill is something that um, our administrators can best utilize to support student outcomes. Thank you. Steve Henderson representing the California School Employees Association. We also um, do not have an official position on the bill. However, we are very supportive of the con uh, concept of the bill, uh, certainly uh, providing uh, information on the evaluation rubrics. What I'd like to speak to specifically is a professional development. We'd like to see in the bill a nod to those stakeholders that are uh, involved in the LCAP process to ensure that they can also participate in the professional development. Jill Rice with the California Federation of Teachers and to echo uh, Mr. Henderson's position, we too would like to see um, an amendment that recognized those who participated in the development of the LCAP, including classified employees, teachers, parents, students, and the such. We look forward to working with the staff and Senator Liu on these amendments. Thank you. Do we have any opposition? Questions from the members? Dr. Pan. Thank you, and um, <laughs> well, uh, thank you, and uh, Chair Lou, I want to express my appreciation for this bill. I know we had an informational hearing on uh, CCEE last year. In fact, I think at that hearing, I had expressed some concerns that there perhaps wasn't enough resources for this and what the expectations were in terms of actually providing direct technical assistance. And I, I think that there are going to be school districts who need this. It's going to be very important moving forward, and hopefully we will also anticipate probably needing additional resources that it's not enough just to tell school district we have a list of resources you can go to, but actually to provide that direct technical assistance. And this is a positive step forward. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, this is due pass as amended to appropriations. Lou? Aye. Lou, aye. Runner? Block? Aye. Block, aye. Hancock? Leva? Leva I, Mendoza? Aye. Mendoza I, Monning? Aye. Monning I, Pan? Aye. Pan I, Vidak? Aye. Vidak I. That's seven, zero, we'll keep it open. 
Thank you. Um, my, the last bill is SB 915. We also had uh, this year a hearing on the teacher shortage and uh, a presentation by Linda Darling Hammond, and this is um, in response to that um, hearing. Uh, SB 915 reestablishes the California Center for Teaching Careers, or CalTeach. And uh, I'd like to start by accepting the uh, committee's amendments. And as amendments, this bill helps address a growing concern in our state, the California teacher shortage. The Learning Policy Institute recently released new evidence of this shortage and identified its critical gaps. The problem is occurring across a range of subject areas, but is most acute in math, science, and special education, which serves our most vulnerable students. The outlook across the state is bleak. We know that from 2001 to 2014, enrollment in California teacher preparation programs declined by 76%. In 2012-13, the number of new credentials issued by the California Commission on Teaching Credentialing dropped below projected district hires. With the future of our state and our students at stake, we cannot treat or allow these trends to continue. And this bill is part of a, a package of bills intended to address the looming teacher shortage and provoke actually more discussion and creative thinking about reinvigorating interest in teaching in the teaching profession. And so one of the approaches is this CalTeach. And uh, this was a very successful program in the late uh, 90s but it was a victim of budget cuts uh, during the recession. The purpose of CalTeach will help recruit teacher candidates from colleges and other careers and, and from other states. It will provide them with valuable information on how to become a teacher and facil facilitate entry into the profession. Specifically, the center will help teacher candidates navigate the credentialing process, which can be complex and intimidating. It will help provide them with valuable information regarding financial aid, loan assistance programs, et cetera. CalTeach will also help teachers find employment to identify teach, teacher shortage areas throughout the state and working with school districts to recruit teachers and fill those positions. This was a successful program, a smart investment for our state as we work to address this teacher shortage. So I ask for your um, support on the bill. Good morning, <laughs> members of the committee. My name is Martha Zaragoza Diaz, and I am representing the Californians Together Coalition. We have a support uh, on the bill, but we also have some suggested amendments that we have shared with um, the senator and the committee staff. Um, we believe that the bill would be um, more st more st would be more better serving the California population by targeting its efforts on um, addressing the shortage of common teacher shortages right now. Um, its efforts should be targeted on those teacher shortage areas that exist currently. Uh, we also believe that the communications um, should be uh, forwarded to uh, uh, communities of uh, ethnic communities as well as lin linguistic communities and that the communications uh, developed and forwarded should also be in other languages. Lastly, we believe that the uh, center should also collect data that will be uh, show what teacher areas uh, there are um, shortages in. So we believe that these um, suggested amendments would strengthen the bill and that it would lead to developing a workforce, a teaching workforce that's more culturally and linguistically diverse, reflective of California's population. Thank you. And we're continuing to work with the author's office on this. Good morning, Debbie. Look, on behalf of State Superintendent of Public Instruction, Tom Torlickson, here in support of the bill. The superintendent agrees that teacher recruitment is a critical issue facing California as entrants into the teacher pipeline have dropped significantly in recent years. Enrollment in teacher preparation has dropped over 76% in the last 15 years. As Senator Liu mentioned, uh, the teacher shortage areas are expanding from previously where it was often limited to the, the STEM fields, special ed. We now include um, in the certified teacher shortage areas history, social science, English, drama as well as self-contained classes, which are the elementary level classes. Superintendent Torlickson believes that addressing teacher shortage is one of the most critical education issues before the legislature, and it's one of his top legislative priorities. We must ensure that we have programs in place to attract and retain a diverse pool of high ability educators for all students, 
particularly in the high needs fields and high needs schools. Responding to the teacher shortage will require a multi-pronged approach with involvement of both state and local agencies. The establishment of the California Center on Teaching Careers through SB 915 will prove invaluable in recruiting teacher candidates and providing them with support, financial information, and job placement assistance. Previous efforts at statewide teacher recruitment have proven successful, including the California Teacher Recruitment Program, which helped to develop a pool of more than 2,000 NCLB highly qualified teachers who are available for assignment to the lowest performing schools. So on behalf of the State Superintendent of Public Instruction, I urge your I vote on SB 915. Good morning, Erica Romero on behalf of the Association of Independent California Colleges and Universities representing the 78 WASC accredited not-for-profit institutions. We are in the process of taking our formal positions on bills, but do support the bill in concept and as the segment that educates 42% of all California teachers, look forward to working with the author and her office on this bill. Thank you. Good morning, Isabel Garcia. Um, Good morning, members. Um, with the California Teachers Association, and we are also in the process of recommending a support for this important bill at our upcoming State Council of Education in April. But we strongly support um, teacher recruitment strategies and programs like this bill to attract talented and diverse individuals from our high schools, our community colleges, our four-year institutions of higher ed and other careers to choose education as a profession so that we can better meet the needs of our California's diverse student population. And we also believe this bill is important so that school districts can continue to fill teacher vacancies with California certificated uh, teachers um, from our existing pool of qualified uh, teachers first before we recruit out of state or seek H-1B visas to fill perennial teacher shortages. So we think this bill is part of that solution. Um, and we thank you. More witnesses in support? Ray Burnell with the California Catholic Conference and we're in strong support of this bill which will help attract and empower great teachers. Thank you. Samantha Corbin on behalf of Common Sense Kids Action in support of this bill as well as the larger package to address the teacher shortage. Thank you. Carlos Machado with California School Board Association. Uh, CSBA supports this bill. It will help our uh, districts fill those open uh, positions and also uh, reduce some of the impact that the shortage is having on our staff, classrooms, and also on students. So thank you for introducing the bill. We appreciate your support. <coughs> Mike Ambrose on behalf of Students First. Uh, we're in support as well, and we also want to uh, push the committee to amend uh, that the center focuses at least initially on um, determining exactly where these gaps are and where our highest needs are for teachers, and that the work um, addresses those shortages first, that we can fill those gaps. Thank you. Good morning, public advocates in support and also affirming uh, some of the suggestions that Californians together has. Thank you. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the committee, Ron Rapp on behalf of the California Federation of Teachers. We haven't taken a formal position on the bill yet, but I am recommending a support position as we go into our convention this weekend. I'm actually a product of a teacher placement center, one of my first jobs I came through a teacher placement center, so I see the value of it. Um, this is a critical issue facing our state, and um, I'm making recommendations to support a number of bills that address the issue. Thank you. Good morning, Barrett Snyder, on behalf of the San Francisco Unified School District and Santa Clara County Office of Education, like many folks this morning, don't have an official position yet, but this, what's in this bill is very consistent with one of the elements of a solution to a teacher shortage that we've been talking about. So we support, likely going to support the bill. Thank you. An opportunity for opposition? Questions from the members? Bill. Bill's been moved as amended, correct? Thank you, members. Please support the bill. The motion is due pass as amended to appropriations. Lou? Aye. Lou, aye. Runner? Block? Block, aye. Hancock? Aye. Hancock, aye. Leva? Aye. Leva, aye. Mendoza? Aye. Mendoza, aye. Monning? Aye. Monning, aye. Pan? Aye. Pan, aye. Vidak? Aye. Vidak, aye. That's eight, zero. That's eight, zero. It's out. Zero, the bill is out. Okay, members, that's it for this morning. Oh.
Oh, yes. Um, just to remind you that we had this, this uh, before the um, finance, before the fiscal deadline, we have 75 bills. Today was very easy. Next week will be easy. But after that, it's about 20 to 25 bills for each hearing. Okay? So, yes. Uh, so let's open the roll for um, Ms. Hancock. Okay. Um, item one is out. Okay. So. Item two, SB 906, is due pass to appropriations. Chair voting aye. Runner? Hancock? Aye. Hancock aye. That's 8 0. 8 0. The bill is out. Item three was on consent, consent as amended. Chair voting aye. Runner? Oh, Hancock? Aye. Hancock aye, eight zero. Eight zero, the bill is out. Item number four, SB 915, do pass as amended to appropriations. That bill is out. Okay, that bill is out. <laughs> so, item number one. Uh, that was SB 871. Yeah. Do pass as amended to appropriations. Chair voting aye. Runner? Hancock? Aye. Hancock aye. That's 8 0. 8 0. That bill is out. Okay, members. Meeting adjourned.